Hello, good morning. I hope everyone is doing fine and uh, that you've really had a nice week. So here we are again to continue from where we ended the other time. Remember, we are still looking at locomotion in organisms. We ended when we um, had started looking at locomotion in insects where we saw that insects move by walking, running, or they can move by flying. Remember we saw that as they move by flying, flight is brought about by muscles. But these muscles, we categorized them into direct flight muscles and indirect flight muscles. We said that direct flight muscles these flight muscles are attached directly to the wings that is why you call them direct flight muscles because they are directly attached to the wings when you look at the images we have the images on the left they show muscles in direct flight Remember we saw that we have the elevator muscles and depressor. Elevator to take the wings up when they contract. Depressor to bring down the wings when they contract. A muscle that contracts is the one that plays a big role. So to elevate is to take up. Meaning during upstroke, when the wings are going up, elevator muscles contract. To depress is to take down. Meaning, during downstroke, the depressor muscles contract. But in direct, just like we've seen, muscles attach directly to the base of the wings. Then indirect, look at the images on your right. Indirect flight muscles. The muscles do not attach to the base of the wing, but they attach to the thorax, the roof of the thorax, called the tagum, and the lower part of the thorax. Then the wings are attached to the thorax, meaning these muscles cause movement of the thorax which then causes movement of the wings. In other words, the muscles bring about movement of the wings indirectly. That is why we call them the indirect flight muscles. Remember we saw that direct flight involves upstroke and downstroke. What happens during upstroke? During upstroke, the elevator muscles contract while the depressor muscles relax and this causes the wings to move up. Remember the elevator and depressor muscles are antagonistic, meaning when one is contracting, the other one is relaxing. We also saw flight we also saw downstroke in indirect, which is the, I mean indirect, which is the opposite of the other one, i.e. the depressor muscles now contract, the elevator relax, and the wings move down. Remember, that has been direct flight where the muscles are directly attached to the wing. We saw that in the previous lesson. Today, we move on and we look at flight using indirect flight muscles. And that flight is what we call indirect flight. Remember, just like we see in the visual here, we have the elevator muscles. We also have the depressor. Now, the elevator muscles are also called the vertical muscles, the ones you see in pink. 
while the depressor are also called longitudinal muscles. In indirect flight, still we have upstroke and downstroke. Now, what happens during upstroke? Look at those muscles there. Remember, during upstroke, the elevator muscles should contract while the depressor are relaxed. During downstroke, the opposite, the depressor must contract while the elevator relax equally in indirect flight during upstroke the elevator muscles contract the depressor muscles relax this time what happens when the elevator muscles the ones in, in that appear in pink when they contract that means they shorten when they contract and shorten they pull the roof of the thorax downwards. The roof of the thorax is moved down. When the roof of the thorax is moved down, then the base of the wing is also pulled down. When the base of the wing is pulled down, what happens to the wing? The base is pulled down, down, eh, you see? Base is pulled down and the wing moves up. Or is elevated therefore we are saying during upstroke the elevator muscles contract the depressor muscles relax the roof of the thorax or the tagum is pulled down the base of the wing is pulled down and the wings are moved up during downstroke it is now the opposite. What happens? The depressor muscles now contract. Because during downstroke, depressor always contract. So, depressor muscles contract. Elevator muscles relax. What happens to the thorax? Remember the roof had moved down. Now the roof or the tagum of the thorax moves upwards when the tagger moves upwards then the wing moves down in summary flight using indirect flight muscles during upstroke the elevator muscles contract the depressor muscles relax the tagum or roof of the thorax is pulled down the base of the wing is pulled down and the wing moves up. During downstroke, the that this time the depressor muscles contract, the elevator muscles relax. The tagum or roof of the thorax moves up and the wings are moved down. So that is flight using indirect flight muscles where the muscles do not attach to the wings but attach to the thorax so that is flight in insects so we've seen that they can move either through direct flight or indirect flight direct flight and indirect flight Therefore, an assignment for us to look at. I want you to outline the similarities and differences between direct and indirect flight in, in, in insects. Outline the similarities and differences between direct and indirect flight in insects. Not forgetting not forgetting that the main part or the main difference comes in when we talk of the position or the point of attachment of the muscles direct directly to the wings indirect the muscles attached to the thorax and then the wings are attached to the thorax therefore in direct muscles move the wings directly in indirect 
muscles move the thorax that in turn move the wings. So that is about locomotion in insects. Locomotion in insects. Remember we saw they move by walking or by flying. Direct or indirect flight.